sit back, relax, welcome to the Laid Back Life. My name is Laid Back Marco, and uh, if you've been a member of the Laid Back Lifestyle, uh, you would know I've kind of been absent for a while. Like, I think I uploaded a, a video almost two months ago, it was either a month ago or like two months ago, and I promised that I would make more content. I do want to make more content, don't get me wrong, like, if I actually want to become a YouTuber, you kind of have to make videos. <laughs> And I hate these kind of videos. I always say that I hate these kind of uh, just talking in front of a camera videos because they're so easy to produce. But then again, a lot of people produce these kind of videos and their quality is uh, poop here. So hopefully this is more than poop here quality. Um, actually trying to learn about color grading and all sorts of camera stuff. I really like to put my camera knowledge into practice here. But um, one of the main reasons I haven't been making videos for the past two months is um, it's, it's not actually eczema, so I thought, for the longest time I thought I was struggling through eczema my whole life, and I really don't, I kind of get pissed off right now, because I really don't want to be an eczema YouTuber. Um, I just don't want it to become my main thing and my main identity, and I'm finding that that's actually, most of my watches, um, looking at my analytics, are from my Dupixent videos and uh, my eczema videos, me talking about eczema. But I really don't want to be, I don't want that to be my identity already hard enough struggling through it but yeah um so recently I've been struggling with not eczema they call it topical steroid withdrawal so my history with eczema and my skin problems starts when I was a baby so I had eczema ever since then um, we used protopic protopic stopped working and then we got prescribed uh, hydrocortisone and of course um, the story with most people with topical steroid withdrawal is you start with hydrocortisone, which is like the lowest potency steroid, and then steroids stop being effective, so you either have to keep putting more on or go to a higher level. And I actually, you know, I've got... I, <laughs> it's weird, because I've gotten to the top 3% of um, League of Legends, and I feel like that's an accomplishment in my life, but it's not really much of one. <laughs> but um, another aspect I've hit the top level at is... Uh, strength of steroids I've used. So um, I was on clobetazole for the last 10 years, which is the top most strong steroid that, and you're not supposed to use these things for more than uh, two weeks, right? So I was on it for 10 years. And it was about four months ago, actually. Um, actually, it was kind of this whole, it started kind of like six months ago. Um, I was really struggling with my skin and I didn't understand why and I would use my clobetazole and it would get better and then it would get worse than um, a while and I was even taking prednisone pills um, because I had been prescribed those in America and I remember the first time I actually heard about red skin syndrome and topical steroid withdrawal was in my YouTube comment section um, a while ago so uh, section yeah. <laughs> so, my, my comment section, someone said, oh, you're not struggling with eczema, you're actually struggling with topical steroid withdrawal. And I didn't believe him because, you know, like, they don't even acknowledge it in the medical field. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna trust my doctor and not some random guy on YouTube, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's where we are now. And um, if you notice, it doesn't look that bad right now. I'm pretty normal right now. But um, six months ago, my face was extremely red. I was struggling with redness. And then um, after the redness, I was struggling with um, this kind of oozing and swelling. And I thought it actually was um, something to do with allergies because the previous owner of my apartment actually owned a cat. And I thought that had something to do with the cat. So I moved apartments, which is a costly endeavor. It's like two grand out of pocket to move apartments. And it's very expensive to move apartments in Japan. So two grand out of pocket um, to move apartments and then the skin problems didn't stop and I was like well that was a waste of money and I'm still miserable because my skin still still skill skills yes my skin is still um, it actually got worse at that point because I, that's when I decided to stop the clobetazole completely so I stopped the clobetazole completely and that's when it really wrecked havoc on my skin so I was flaking super hard um like all the stories you read online of topical steroid withdrawal completely true like my whole face would flake and it's worse on my face um i'm lucky that i didn't have it too terribly 
um, on the rest of my body. I had it in the typical eczema spots. So I had it in um, the typical skin folds, um, but it wasn't eczema, it was topical steroid withdrawal. So it was really oozy and red. And um, yeah, my whole face, face would flake off and I would have to sweep my apartment like all the time because it would just be dead skin. I've never flaked so much in my life. Like it was more flaky than like, uh, like a B, B car lot, like more flaky than the salesman at a B, B lemon lot. Like it was, it was so bad. It was just flakes everywhere. And like my desk at work and right now I'm still flaking, but it's better. So I'm going to show you a picture of me just two weeks ago. Um, and then a, a month or two ago is relatively the same. So when I was, uh, so I live in Japan, right? Uh, well, if, if, if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I live in Japan for those new um, to the video. Uh, so I live in Japan and uh, the whole coronavirus situation happened, kind of shaky employment. Um, I don't know if I get to stay here long term, but I was really weighing my options of what I wanted to do moving forward, um, uh, combating this topical steroid withdrawal because uh, um, a month ago I was almost unrecognizable. I think you can see on my last YouTube video about the Gencon, I'm like super red and I look sunburned and I'm pretty swollen. Um, but I was really researching topical steroid withdrawal and how people overcome it. And I was excited because in Japan, there's this guy named Dr. Sato, who's an expert in topical steroid withdrawal. And um, I was like, maybe I could go there for three months and uh, try to get treated. And um, But that didn't work because I didn't speak enough Japanese. And then I was considering another option. I could move home back with my parents and try to get a remote work job, like a part-time remote work job, and um, just live it out with my parents. And I didn't want to do that because I really do love Japan and I do want to stay here. I really love my girlfriend, yeah. And uh, that's one of the reasons I want to stay here, actually. I really love her. And um, yeah, my dream's here, so I really do have to stay here. And um, I felt like if I left now, it would be one of those things where I said I'd come back true but I never actually would come back so um yeah so I'm trying to stay here long term and then I had another option of going on to Dupixent. Dupixent is actually pretty new here in Japan. I've been on Dupixent before but I had a couple problems with pink eye, the conjunctivitis and um, I had conjunctivitis and uh, just swollen irritated eyes so I actually went with that option um, after weighing um, all the pros and cons of everything because I was reading um, there's this girl who used Dupixin to overcome her topical steroid withdrawal there's a guy um, I think his name's Jeremy I really like his videos because um, even though he's like allergic he's allergic to more things than me which I didn't know was possible but um, just so many people make these topical steroid videos and like I was scared to make a video and it's funny because I was scared to even go to work like it really takes over your life. Like it's hard to describe how much it takes over your life. Like going to work and focusing was really hard. Like it was so difficult to um, focus. Like because I was in intense pain, um, skin flakes were just everywhere, and like it was so itchy. And um, it's hard to like want to socialize with people. And I'm already I already have a hard time socializing with people as it is because I'm just awkward. And, uh, that's part of my character, but. Um, with the, the face, it just made it like 10 times worse. Um, and I really like exercising. I love exercising and I didn't want to exercise because the sweat actually stung my face and then showering, is, you're not supposed to do it. So I know this video is kind of going all over the place, but the, the way I chose to com combat um, the topical steroid withdrawal is to, I, I'm doing this thing called no moisture treatment and I'm not perfect with it um, actually. So no moisture treatment is pretty much, you limit your water intake, you limit your showers, um, you limit, um, oh, you're supposed to go to sleep at a certain time, but I don't do that. Um, but really the main thing is just uh, limiting your showers and uh, limiting your water intake. Um, so the skin can dry and flake, and apparently that's how it feels. But um, it was still very miserable going through that, so I decided to go to Dupixent. So I went, I went to Dupixent and I was reading about it and you can actually manage the side effects 
Um, some people are able to manage it, but I'm using... Oh. Mind you, last time my um, conjunctivitis didn't start around until around six months. But So I'm trying to be proactive and use... Um, these are just, um, just fake tears, pretty much. So use these fake tears. And um, apparently some of the side effects are just because it's dry and then... Um, scratch your eyes and then that's how it comes with and then this is a uh, zatitin which is zatitor it's an antihistamine so it's just a optical antihistamine so i'm using trying to use that to preemptively manage the the side effects because i don't want to have to use um, hydrocortisone or any sort of steroid eye drops because steroids are how i got the, in this mess in the first place right so i want to stay away from that so I noticed after um, after my first shot, it was flaking super badly. Like it's, it was flaking even worse than um, just a topical steroid withdrawal. But then the skin underneath was much healthier, which was nice. Um, I just bumped my mic. I'm sorry. And I'm now I'm after my second dose. Um, I'm looking more like way more normal. Like it's still not perfect, but I'm looking way more normal than before. And I shouldn't use the word no normal, but um, another thing that's really helping me is there's a new medication out in Japan. It's a uh, oh wow, that scared that scared me. the door just closed because the air pressure or something. Um, it's a new medication out in here in Japan, and like the dermatologist was really excited to uh, show it to me. Um, it's called um, Corrective. That's <laughs> Corre. Corrective, and it's actually a jack inhibitor which is a lot of people on the topical steroid withdrawal forums and HMO forums on Facebook are really excited about jack inhibitors um, because um, it works similar to the way Dupixent does oh mind you some people when they go through topical steroid withdrawal um, go on immunosuppressants like cyclosporin which is you know, it's just as bad you know well, I guess you have to choose one of the other, right? So you choose your poison there, but um, this works similar to Dupixin by only blocking certain interleukins, and uh, it's topically applied. And I find that when I found that when I put this on, like it really helped my skin. So hopefully there's no rebound effect like steroids. But um, I'm actually gonna post uh, not not my this video, but some pictures to the um, topical steroid. I drew, oh, you know what's funny is like I'm a social media marketer person and I want I want to do social media for a living right and the whole personality thing but um this is the for really the first time like I started interacting in groups online like with my eczema and then I started interacting with people on reddit more and like yeah reddit's a cool place I didn't realize how cool reddit was uh, until recently but yeah so this is why I haven't been making youtube videos it's uh it's really my skin it really takes over your life and um if you know anyone going through topical steroid is probably it's, it's just so hard to do anything and actually one of the saving graces for me um, during topical steroid withdrawal um, just dealing with everything is actually video games I really love video games and um, it takes takes your mind off the pain and it really just allows you to focus and get into the zone um, which is you know it can be bad but um, it reminds me when I was actually um, this is, a, this is a story that I kind of bring up in some video, YouTube videos every now and then, but it's good to um, remind myself and give myself some perspective that um, when I was about five, six, or seven, I, you know, it's kind of, the memory's kind of... I actually had to go to the hospital because um, I'd been scratching my leg and somehow um, my leg got infected and um, the infection actually made its way to my, my blood and my kidney somehow. I don't know how that works. I'm not a medical professional, but anyway, I was, I was hospital up for like three weeks, and every day I had to get and not an injection, but they had to draw my blood every day, and I hated that as a kid. They had like five nurses to hold me down, like these big buff male nurses to hold me down. Cause I was a strong kid, you know. <laughs> but uh, I was stuck in the hospital for three weeks, and the only thing that really made me feel normal made me feel good in the hospital was other than my family being there you know um, my mom was there a lot uh, 
but it was video games. I remember they had a like N64 and an NES on a cart and they would, they would bring it around and like it made me feel not hospital like it made me feel so like just like any other kid to be able to sit there and play a video game and explore um, a different world it was you know a hospital room can only do so much. So um, that's probably one of the one of the reasons I really like video games is it really helped me through that phase and it, it's coming again to help me um, now. And the nice thing about you know with this whole COVID crisis and everything, um, more people are kind of have to get used to you know communicating through a camera or. Um, but with video games, I don't have to show my face. So like when my face is really bad, I, you know, I just sit there and I talk to my, my I've been able to meet a couple friends in Japan and I'm actually practicing my Japanese listening skills sometimes when they speak Japanese. Um, but I'm able to just hang out with them and not worry about what I look like. And um, that was really nice. My video games were my saving grace. And, uh, but so this is my video on collective. I'm, I'm just going to show it. This isn't a sponsored video or anything, but like, you know, I wouldn't want to be an HBO YouTuber to the extent where I'm sponsored by like a corporation. Oh, but, um, no, thank you. Um, but yeah, that's just my little video on how I'm combating my alcohol steroid control. And uh, collective of you, correct to you, and um, do pixels. So yeah, that's how I'm trying to manage this. And uh, there's also another reason why I haven't been uploading videos, but that will be in the next video. Because you know, gotta keep you coming around, you know? Anyway, stay chill. Maybe I'll have more go out.